flying an approach in bad weather in a high performance aircraft like the Metro is always a challenging task. In this case it was being flown over rough, a very rough terrain uh, and it didn't leave a lot of margin for error. Peter Carter is an aviation lawyer and a pilot. He believes there is a problem at Lockhart River with the satellite or GPS landing approach. Carter says the one used by Flight 675, known as Runway 12, is inherently risky. There are aerodromes where a GPS approach won't be suitable. Lockhart River, I would suggest, is an, is a, is an aerodrome where the uh, Runway uh, 12 approach is, uh, is, is marginal in terms of safety. Ideally, airstrips are built where it's safe to fly a plane around them. Lockhart River, for example, can be approached from over the sea. But in the last few years, new GPS approaches, which rely on satellite technology, have been introduced for most Australian airports. Some, like Lockhart River, says Peter Carter, leave little margin for error. It's marginal because of the hazardous terrain to the northwest of the aer aerodrome, uh, over which the approach must be conducted. This is the runway 12 approach at Lockhart River. Instead of descending close to the airstrip and over the sea, the pilot can use GPS points to follow a long track with a gradual descent in line with the airstrip. In this case, it's more direct and so can be quicker and cheaper to fly. But Carter and others say that in a plane like the Metroliner, in bad weather, it would have been extremely challenging. This is the chart or plate the pilots would have relied on in low or perhaps zero visibility. The pilot uh, uh, is flying the aircraft without a visual reference to the horizon is, is a skill is, is quite difficult of its own. In this instance, uh, on, a, uh, on an approach which is the hardest part of any instrument flight, is uh, what the pilot's doing is, is interpreting the aircraft instruments, monitoring the approach plate, which he'll probably have on his knee, uh, reading, uh, uh, looking for readouts to the aircraft position, waiting for the next approach, uh, the next fix to, ar to arrive, or the aircraft to arrive over the next fix, and uh, keeping the aircraft uh, in balance, often in turbulence, uh, as well as monitoring which is the next stage to descend to and what that descent altitude is. Several pilots told us that in circumstances like that, it can be very easy to lose what they call situational awareness. In other words, it's easy to get lost. Instrument training includes uh, training to, to double check, uh, to double check altitudes and not to misread uh, approach plates. However, uh, human behavior is, is known to, uh, and aircraft accidents have occurred as a result of misreading position and altitude. Since Lockhart River, pilots have pointed out another problem with the GPS charts or plates. Though pilots are usually trained to measure distance in relation to the airstrip, the plates measure some sections to fixed points and other sections to the airstrip. The pilot is not reporting or navigating to, a partic to one single point, which one would logically think would be the aerodrome. Rather, he has to nav navigate to to various different fixes along the approach path. So it's possible to forget which one you're in? It's, imp it's possible to, to make that mistake and it's, a, it's an unnecessary uh, requirement. I believe that the approach distance should be consistently f from the aerodrome reference point.